Hello and welcome back to Supposedly Fun. My name is Greg. I am here today to present my pile of possibilities for Pride Month. These are the books that I am giving myself as options to read during the month of June. You can see both of my babies are hanging out in this chair right there. There's Guinness and there is Jamie who is just watching me in judgment, apparently. It's what she does. But anyway, I don't like to think of June as like a TBR for me because to me, to be read means you have to read it. You don't have the option of not getting to any of these titles. So I like to create a pile of possibilities. I stole that term from that bookish bear on Instagram. And I just give myself a lot of different options. So we have a lot of titles to get through. I'm not going to spend a lot of time talking about the plot of these books. So hopefully, if you're interested, you can ask down below or you can look the title up yourself. I'm going to include the list down in the description box so you can find out anything you need about these titles. If you've read any, I'd love to hear your feedback if you have other recommendations based on these. So I'm dividing this into two sections. There's my physical pile of possibilities, which is really dependent on books that I have here in my library. And I'm really only focusing on that. I do have a book on hold at the library that would fit if it gets here, but I'm not gonna include it here because I don't know if it's gonna make it in the month of June. And I'm only focusing on things that I have on my shelf and can pull from. And then I have a list of possibilities that are available at the moment on audio. So we're gonna divide it between the two of them. I have the physical pile of possibilities and the audio pile of possibilities. I will say, I made this list and then the news started getting a little stressful recently. And on top of that, just some other things. Guinness hasn't been doing super well. He's fine, but that's been stressing me out a little bit. So I will say, I think my priority in Pride Month is going to change a little bit. I think I'm really going to have to focus on emphasizing happy stories. So a lot of these books might be a little too stressful and sad. Just the nature of it. There are many books in here that deal with AIDS and death and dying and grief. And I'm going to keep them on the list as a possibility, but there is a good chance I will really not be in the headspace to want to engage with those books. And I'll try to focus on some of the quote unquote happier books instead and get a little bit of joy. And I want to quickly get to the list so we can make sure we get through everything without having this video run long. So let's dive in. And the first book is a prime example of one of those books that is probably going to be too difficult. It's Blackwater Lightship by Colm Tabeen. I had wanted to get to a Colm Tabeen book last year, The Story of the Night. And that was the book I was intending to be my first Colm Tabeen book book. By the way, I should mention, I am wearing my Read With Pride t-shirt, which I got from out of print, but I actually purchased it in an independent bookstore. So I want to, it, it just felt thematically appropriate for this video. That's all. So then somebody recommended this book to me by Colm Tabin, and I started thinking maybe this should be my first book by him. So I asked around and I think it was Jen the Librarian kind of pointed out that this seems a little bit more like a me book because it involves that sort of generational aspect, but it is a sad book. It involves a man dying of AIDS and his family coming together around him. So I want to read this in June, but again, there is a chance I will not be in the headspace for something like this. I have been wanting to reread Maurice. Maurice. They pronounce it Morris in the UK, and I can't stop saying Maurice. So I'm going to keep doing it by E.M. Forster, because I think this is has become my favorite book over time. But I haven't reread it since the first time I read it, which was somewhere back around 2006 or 2007. So I'm really due for a reread. And E.M. Forster has become my favorite author. So I'm due for a reread. And the thing that is giving me a springboard, I'm going to spoil my audio pile of possibilities for a moment, is that I have a copy of Alec by William DeCanzio, which is a sequel, again, not written by Ian e. Forster, obviously, but it is intended as a continuation of the story from Maurice, and the audio is available. So I, I want to reread Maurice before I do this one. So if I give myself a kick in the pants during Pride Month to do this, I will feel like I can finally get around to Alec. And I don't think this one 
would be impacted by a bad headspace or a potential bad headspace. So that part should be fine. The next one is Love in the Big City by Sang Young Park, translated by Anton Herr. This was on the long list for the International Booker Prize, and it just sounds like something I would really like to read. I don't think it would run into any problems with bad headspace, but you never really know. Um, and it was one of the runners up for the LGBTQ in translation read along as well. I should mention for that, for that, um, this is the only one of the three titles that were nominated that I have in my hands. Um, I have a copy of Notes of a Crocodile on order and I'm, to be honest, I'm kind of wondering if I'm just going to focus on those two and not do the main selection. I'll put a link to the LGBTQ in translation read along down below. This is the only one that I have right now. So it's the only one that's going in my pile of possibilities for Pride Month. Then there is Last Night at the Telegraph Club by Melinda Lowe. This was the winner of the National Book Award for Young People's Literature last year. And I want to read it. Seems like it would be a good option. It is a little bit chunky, but actually it's like 400 pages. Seems doable. Don't think it would be too heavy. So should be very possible to read this book in the month of June. We'll see how that goes. And then there is Rainbow Milk by Paul Mendez. This is something that I've been wanting to read since it was released and Erica from The Broken Spine gifted me a copy last year. So here it is and I would still like to get to it. So hopefully it will be something I'll get to in June. If not, I want to get to it by the end of the year. The Laura's by Sarah Taylor is something that has been interesting to me because it includes a character who is non-binary or gender fluid. They, uh, it, the way it describes it. Told from the perspective of Alex, a teenager who equates gender identification with unwillingly choosing a side in a war. I mean, that sounds interesting to me. And it's, it's I have read books recently that have included non-binary characters, but still, I think that would be something that would be really interesting to read. I should also mention that not all of these books are by gay authors, but they do feature a gay or LGBTQ storyline or plot or character. And not all of the books feature LGBTQ protagonists, but they are by an LGBTQ author. So in some way, they qualify. The next one on my pile of possibilities is Brickmakers by Silva Almada, translated from the Spanish by Annie McDermott. This is a slim book, but it is about toxic masculinity and violence, but it is also inspired by Romeo and Juliet in a way. So I don't know that I'll be in the headspace for it, but at the same time, it intrigues me and it's not that long. So hopefully that should be doable. There's Devotion by Hannah Kent. This is something that uh, could be doable. I don't really know. Some of the chapters look like they would be really short. Um... Jen the Librarian had read this, and then Jackie McMenamin recommended it. I've seen it pop up in a couple of other places. I ordered it from the UK. It has this beautiful, shimmery cover. Maybe I'll read it in June during Pride Month. I would like to. Uh, obviously, I have set myself up for failure. That's why I think of this as a pile of possibilities, not something that, like, to be read. You must read because I'm giving myself a lot to choose from. And actually, when I realized that I might not be in the headspace for some serious books, I went back and added more options because I'm not trying to set myself up to fail. I have no intention of reading all of these books. I just want to give myself options for whatever headspace I feel that I am in. If I want something serious, I have options. If I want something light, I have options. If there's something that might straddle the line, I have options as well. That is the way I am thinking about this. And Tin Man by Sarah Winman. I didn't intend to include the books that have sort of shimmery covers back to back, but here we are. This is something I ordered recently because a lot of people over the last six months or so have been telling me that I should read it and it sounds fascinating. So here it is on my pile of possibilities. And if I don't get to it in June, I might think about doing it at some point before the end of the year. We'll see how that goes. Next is... Ruby Fruit Jungle by Rita Mae Brown. This is something that has been perpetually on my pile of possibilities for Pride Month. And sometimes it has been, like two years ago, I changed my pile of possibilities because with everything going on in the world, I really wanted to focus on queer black stories. And that's what I did for the month of June. So this obviously got sidelined. And then last year, 
I can't remember what I changed my emphasis to, but it kind of sidelined Ruby Fruit Jungle again. So maybe this will be the year where I do it. I also did not include some books that have been mainstays of my pile of possibilities that I haven't gotten to in recent years. Like I, you might notice I am not going to include City of Night by John Rishi. And I am, I took out Gloria Naylor's The Women of Brewster Place because I don't think I'm in a headspace for City of Night and it's a really big book. So I feel like I would want to knock some of these other books off of my list this month instead of putting that one on. And Erica from The Broken Spine uh, gave me some feedback that the LGBTQ element of Women of Brewster Place is pretty small. So I would be okay trying to fit it in in another month. So that is what I intend to do. Along the lines of LGBTQ classics, I pulled two of my little sister's cl classics. These are, um, it's, it, it's a publishing project from Arsenal Pulp Press. They identified forgotten or in danger of being forgotten LGBTQ classics. One of them is The Song of the Loon by Richard Amory, which was a, the most popular gay book of the 1960s. It was referenced in the Stonewall Reader, which I read a couple of years ago. And that's how I found this series of books that Arsenal Pulp Press did. And it's described as, um, I'll just, I'm not really doing plots, but let me read the back to you and you'll see why this might fit my mood. This is one of the books that I added late to the pile of possibilities. Uh, it tells the story of Ephraim McIver, a 19th century outdoorsman, and his travels through the Amer American wilderness where he meets a number of men who share with him stories, wisdom, and intimate encounters. Unique among pulp novels of the time, the gay characters in Song of the Loon are strong and romantically drawn traits which have earned the book a place in the canon of gay American literature. So, sounds fascinating to me, and no time like the present. The other Little Sisters classic that I've added is Franny, the Queen of Provincetown by John Preston. This one is about Franny is a proud, protective friend to the gay men of Provincetown, Massachusetts, as they fight their battles against self-hatred and ostracism. Haunted by the loss of his first love, Franny vows never to let fear and anger consume those who are hated for being queer. And the description goes on, but I'm not really doing descriptions in this. And it's short. It's roughly 100 pages. So that seems like it would be very easy to cram in this month if I'm feeling like I'm struggling at any point. So there it is. Then we have A Place Called Winter by Patrick Gale. This is a recent addition to my library, as was Tin Man because I've just heard really great things about it, again, from Jen the Librarian and Jackie McMenamin and a couple of other people. So I ordered it, here it is, and I would really like to read it if I don't get to it in June. I'm hoping I will fit it in before the end of the year. Gordo by Jamie Cortez. These are stories that are sort of semi-autobiographical. This is definitely something I would like to prioritize for this June, and I am hoping that I'll be able to fit it in. Because it's short stories, it also feels like it's something that I can fit in no matter what my headspace is. It seems like this could be something that would be easy to get through, even if I'm feeling stressed, even if I'm feeling like I'm not really in a mood to read very much. And if I need something fun, I threw in The Intoxicating Mr. Lavelle by Neil Blackmore. This is something Jen the Librarian had talked about. Sounds, I mean, it's a historical book. It sounds like it's kind of fun and frilly, and that might be exactly what I need in the month of June. So there it is. I don't know that Cantores by Carolina de Robertis is something that's going to fit my mood, but I've heard really great things about it and I really want to read it. It was on my pile of possibilities last month and it, last year rather, and I didn't get to it. So hopefully this year, maybe we'll see. I don't know that I'm going to be in a mood for After Francesco by Brian Malloy, but I really want to read this book because this deals with AIDS and it's sad. And Chelsea from the Montana Book Company recommended it and it's been about a year I think she recommended it in July and I got that copy <laughs> in July so we're almost a year since I've had this book and have not gotten around to reading it I don't know that this June is gonna be the time but I would really like to get to this book so I'm putting it on I almost took Becoming a Man by Paul Monette off because a lot of his writing does deal with AIDS, and Joel read one of his books, and it, it was beautiful, but very sad. And I don't know that I want to deal with sad. <laughs> so I almost took this off, but I kept it, because Paul Monette is an author I really, 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 really need to get to at some point. And I feel a little bit ashamed that I haven't managed to read anything by him yet. So I need to fix that. Maybe this will be the year, but I'm giving myself... 
and out knowing that I might very much not be in the mood for it. And speaking of authors I have not read yet and really, really, really need to get around to, there's uh, A Boy's Own Story by Edmund White. I really need to read this. It's a, an LGBTQ classic that I've never gotten around to, and Edmund White is an LGBTQ classic author that I have never gotten around to. So, yeah, I need to make it happen. Don't know if it'll be this year, but I would love to get to it. So that's a really big physical pile of possibilities. Oh, I forgot one. Because this is something that was in my May book haul, and I'm tossing it on the pile. Uh, Yerba Buena by Nina LaCour. Because this seems like it's serious enough that it won't feel like fluff. And yet, it seems like it wouldn't be difficult to get through. So I'm throwing it on that pile of possibilities as well. This was actually just something I decided to add to the pile of possibilities an hour ago. Hence, I forgot it. Because I didn't have it on the actual pile. Now let's talk about the audio pile of possibilities. And for this one, I'm going to have to refer to my list because a lot of them I have saved on an app on my phone, but I have physical copies of only some of them. So let me pull the pile up here, reorganize just a little bit, and let's do this. The first one is, of course, Alec by William DeCanzio. And I really want to read this book, but as I said earlier, when I was talking about my physical pile of possibilities, the barrier for entry here is that I want to reread Maurice before I read this, because this is intended as a continuation of the story of Maurice. So if I read Maurice this month, I have the audio of this ready to go. And I, part of me feels like this is something I might want to read in print. So if I don't get to it this month, it's fine. But I'm giving myself the option of having the audio available. And then I really want to do The Kingdom of Sand by Andrew Holleran. Andrew Holleran wrote Dancer from the Dance, which is a gay classic book, and it's the first time he's written a book in a long time. I actually have access to the audio. The book doesn't come out until June 7th, but I have access to the audio. So if I can finish the two audio books that I'm kind of working on now, I really want this to be the next one that I work on. And we'll see how that goes. But this is something that I'm going to say I'm really going to prioritize as an audio in the month of June. So this feels like a definite for my pile of possibilities. And then there's Chef's Kiss by TJ Alexander. Because again, I'm probably going to need fun and easy and joyful. And LGBTQ romance just fits the bill for that. So... It is what it is. And then there's Razorblade Tears by S.A. Cosby. I always want to say Crosby, but it's Cosby. I've heard so many good things about this. Charlie from the Montana Book Company loved it. Joel loved it. Abby from the Montana Book Company loved it. I've seen a bunch of people on social media get around to this book recently, and they have also loved it. It's supposed to be difficult and violent, and this is one of those situations where um, I don't believe S.A. Cosby is LGBTQ. The protagonists of the book are not LGBTQ, but they are men whose sons were a couple and have been murdered, and they are avenging that crime and avenging the lost relationship they had with their sons. So there is an LGBTQ angle to this, and for that reason, it is on my pile of possibilities for this month. And then, Angels in America by Tony Kushner. This has been a mainstay of my pile of possibilities for a long time, and I actually almost picked it up three years ago in the month of June and held off because there was a revival on Broadway and with uh, Nathan Lane and Andrew Garfield and I had heard that they were going to do an audio with the cast of the Broadway show and I've kind of held off on this book because I wanted that audio. Well, Joel found that audio on Libro so I, we, we might not do it in June because we're going to have a road trip in the month of July and Joel has said that he he has seen Angels in America, but hasn't read the play. So we might listen to it on the road in July. But I'm keeping it on my pile of possibilities for June in case I make it happen this month. Uh, and then I put on Golden Boys by Phil Stamper because, again, fun and frilly seems like a good way to go this month. So I'm giving myself some options, and most of them are going to be on audio. Then there's The 30 Names of Night by Zane Jukadar. I had purchased this from Montana Book Company because this is going to fit the prompt on my Montana Book Company reading challenge for 2022 about a book you chose for its cover. 
And I figure because the audio is available, I might do it that way this month. If I don't, I might try to revisit the book at some time this year because I need to try to get it in this year to fit that prompt. So I might not get to this in June. And if I don't, it's fine. But if I do, I have something checked off my to-do list, which would be great. That's always great. And then, don't judge me, I put Deft Utopia, a memoir and a love letter to a way of life by Niall DeMarco. Because, I mean, come on. This is partially interesting because I, I hadn't realized he has moved into producing. Uh, he actually pro executive produced the sh documentary short um, Audible, I think was the name of it, the one about the deaf football team that was nominated for an Oscar for Best Documentary Short. And I didn't realize he had done that. So that's pretty cool. He's also a winner of America's Next Top Model, a winner of Dancing with the Stars, I think. And he's pretty, so that's fun. But um, I, I just think it would be an interesting life story. He defines it as um, sexually fluid, so he fits Pride Month. Um, but I just think it would be interesting to get his life story, especially with Coda and True Biz is another book I really want to read this year. It feels like it would be a good extension of that sort of experience of um, what life is like for a deaf person in America. So for that reason, I'm putting it on my pile of possibilities and I don't care what you think. The next one is The Man Who Ate Too Much, The Life of James Beard by John Birdsall. My interest in this one was really sparked by the series Julia about the life of Julia Child because... Um, James Beard turns up as a character in at least one episode, possibly two or three, and I just really got interested in his, in his life story, so this would help me get that. And then we have Loveless by Alice Oseman. I have a prompt on the Montana Book Company Reading Challenge for 2022 that involves reading a book by an LGBTQ author, and I decided to make it difficult for myself, or more difficult, more of a challenge, because obviously I read LGBTQ authors all the time. Reading a book by a lesbian, reading a book by a gay man, even reading a book by a transgender person is not that difficult for me. So I decided to look to one of the lesser paid attention to letters in the acronym. And I found, or someone told me earlier in the year that Alice Oseman defines as asexual. So here's one of Alice Oseman's books. Obviously, she is most famous for Heartstopper. I read one of those books. I could easily do that, but I'm going to go with this one as well because I believe it also deals with an asexual protagonist. And if you're if you're going to do it, go all the way. So this is something that I'm hoping to get to this month because, again, if I get to it, it'll check something off of my to-do list, which is always great. Same goes for Ash by Melinda Lowe, who did Last Night at the Telegraph Club, which is somewhere in this massive pile. Um... One of the prompts on the reading challenge is to do a fairy tale retelling that is has a queer spin on it, and this is a queer retelling of Cinderella. So if I get to this, I've done my job. <laughs> and then there's Cemetery Boys by Aidan Thomas. This would also fit something for the reading challenge because one of the prompts is to read uh, a recent Pacific Northwest Booksellers Association award winner. And I was going to do a different book, but Joel listened to this on audio earlier this year and really just loved it. So I'm going to give it a try. And I am looking forward to it. Uh, and again, if I get to it this month, it'll check something off of my to-do list. So that should be good. And The House in the Cerulean Sea by T.J. Klune is another book I'm putting on this list because I've been wanting to read it for a really long time. Joel read it last year, I think. A close friend of ours read it last year. And I, so many people have told me that I should read it. And, you know... I'm th I might be in the headspace for it right now, so we'll see how that goes. Uh, and then we have Rick by Alex Gino. I read Melissa last year, listened to it on audio, and this is really short. So if I need a gimme, it's short, but I also really want to read it. So there's that as well. And then there is Amateur, A Reckoning with Gender, Identity, and Masculinity by Thomas Page McBee. I have the physical copy, but it is available on audio. I do feel like this is something that I'm probably not as likely to get to because of all the other things that are like to-do list items in my audio and all of the options I've given myself for like fun and frivolous, but I still really want to read that book. So I'm including it just in case. Same goes for After Parties by Anthony Viasna, so which is available on audio. So I have it saved. I don't know that I'll get to it, but I would like to. So we'll see. Uh, someone had pointed out 
that after parties, which is stories, and Gordo, which is stories, would be good companion pieces. So in a perfect world, I will get both of these in in Pride Month, but we'll see how that goes. And then we have Where We Go From Here by Lucas Roca. I actually don't even really remember what this book is about, but I have it saved. It fits the brief, so I am including it on the list of possibilities. And then we have Mississippi by Kevin, Mississippi Sissy by Kevin Sessoms, uh, which is available on audio. I have owned a copy of this book for a very, very long time, like 10 years, maybe. When was this released in paperback? Let's find out. It was published in 2007. So yeah, at least 10 years I have had this in my library. So maybe audio is the way I'll finally get to it. And then there's Felix Ever After by Case and Calendar, which I've been wanting to read for a while and haven't gotten around to, and Logical Family, a memoir by Armistead Malpin, which I have also wanted to get to since it was released and haven't gotten to yet. So we'll see if I finally get around to it this June. And again, I have no intention of reading all of these books, and you can tell because that's a lot. That's a lot of books. A lot of books. Don't intend to get to all of them, but I think I've given myself a pretty good spread of options. Some serious, some thematically heavy, some light, some fun, some breezy, some romantic, some challenging. Hopefully that's the way it will turn out to be. If you have recommendations for any that you think I should really put an emphasis on or prioritize in the month of June, let me know in the comment section down below. I'd love to know what you are going to read for Pride Month, and let me know that in the comment section down below as well. If you have recommendations for other things I might be able to seek out, put that in the comment section down below as well. As always, I really appreciate your time. Let's see how many of these I get to, and until next time, happy reading and happy Pride.